everybody good morning to you and happy mother's day to all the beautiful mothers here and um this happy sunday to brother leonard He's, uh, <laughs> nothing beautiful about that but uh glad to have everybody out this morning for some bible study man and uh, enjoyed that first session that we we got to uh show a lot of stuff there so this morning if you would uh turn to the book of hebrews <coughs> Hebrews, when you get there, go to chapter 11. So I'm going to preface this message this morning, and I'm going to give it a title, Your Belief, quotation marks, can be problematic. Your belief can be problematic. So we're going to see what we have here when we talk about that. All of us have talked to someone and we've tried to share this truth with them, and they say, well, we believe, right? Yeah. Well, my pastor believes, yeah. my daddy believes, <clears throat> my mommy believes, uh, what saith the word of God? Says mommy and daddy and pe preacher and pastor, do they agree with the word of God? No, so... You'll find a lot of times that your belief is problematic. When a person has already believed something, it gets really hard to reach them with the truth. Because a lot of people, if you could picture a cliff out here that fell 100 feet to the ground, they're in so much belief of that system that if they watch the first guy walk to the edge and fall off, the second guy, well, you know, he would just believe, well, if it was good for them to fall for 100 feet, I might as well hang in here and fall with them. That's how belief will get you, man. Your belief. Christ did not die on the cross for you to have a belief system. Christ died on the cross that he might bring us to him by faith. Right? There's, there's a difference. Everybody believes something. Right? The atheists believe something. I once was a tadpole, long and thin. Then I was a bullfrog with my tail tucked in. Then I was a monkey hanging from a tree. Now I'm a professor with a PhD. They believe something. <laughs> they believe something, right? A big old bang happens somewhere whenever, and all of a sudden, bang, comes stuff. They believe something. They, yeah, you know the famous last words, those know God, and I hate him. <laughs> How can you hate something that don't exist? Why would I run out here and try to prove something that don't exist? They believe something. The Mormons believe something. Jehovah's Witness believes something. Everybody believes something. I watched a guy yesterday morning for 45 minutes. He believed something. But you know what I found out in this message? He wasn't in the faith. He was in the Bible. But he wasn't in his faith. He was even in the King James Bible. But he wasn't in the faith. So look here in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. See that? So faith has a what? A substance. You know what that substance is, right? It's the Word of God. And none of us have seen Jesus Christ, have you? No. Jesse? Plantis, Sid, Roth, you've never seen Jesus Christ. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Yeah. You don't know what he looks like. If I had to picture him, I'd take him about five foot seven and bald headed. Amen. That's what I believe. That's, that's my Jesus. I don't know what he looks like. But I know one thing. He's there. He was here. He went back to glory, and he's coming to get the church, the body of Christ. Amen. And he's going to come a second time to the earth. Yep. Amen. I believe that. Turn to Romans in chapter 10. That's our blessed hope, isn't it? Yes. Amen. What did he say it was? The substance of things hoped for? The evidence of things not seen? Well, my hope is that Jesus Christ is going to deliver me from this present evil world. I haven't seen that. But I have that hope. Why? Because the substance of the Word of God told me to be looking for that. Titus chapter 3. Amen. 
Now over in Romans, when you get there, go to chapter 10. Chapter 10, look at verse 17. So then, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by what? So faith is a substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen, and it comes by the word of God. So it's not a belief system. That's what men do. Men put you in a belief system. It's what they believe. Told you my story when I first come to Right Division. I showed it to a Baptist pastor, and he said, we go back to John the Baptist. That's where we get our stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, he's got a belief. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He believes John. I don't know why John never mentioned his gospel not one time. I said, well, we kind of go with Paul because we got verses to show you that. <laughs> so he has belief, but he's not in faith. He's not in the faith. Look over in 1 Corinthians with me. This is going to be short and to the point. Short and to the point. It's a lot of those oh wow moments, right? That does make some sense. But the Bible will make sense if you'll stay with it. The Bible, I found out, is not nearly hard to understand as it is for people to believe it. Even when they see the pure words on the page. Look here in verse 7. Which chapter? Oh, chapter 2, verse, verse 7. I'm sorry. Chapter 2, verse 7. I want you to look at verse 5. Now, we're talking here. I want you to have this word in your mind as we talk. As we talk this morning, I want you to have this word in, in your mind. That's where we started, right? We showed you what faith is. It's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, and we show you where it comes from. It comes from God. It comes from the Word of God. You with me? All right, so look here. Verse 5. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but it's in the power of God. So where should your faith not stand? In what Dr. Bottle Stopper has got to say about it. Right? Yeah. How be it, we speak wisdom among them that are perfect. More mature, I think, is what that means. Yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world, that come to naught. All that, all that jargon comes to naught. Don't let your faith rest in that. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Our glory. See that? Which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Let me ask you this question. If Paul is preaching a hidden wisdom and a mystery, if the people back here had known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Is there any way they have the same faith that you have by understanding the mystery? No. No. Impossible, right? You know what? They didn't know. They didn't know. They had no clue that Judas Iscariot betraying Christ, <laughs> Satan entering him, them putting him on a cross, crying out, crucify him, away with him. We'll have nobody to reign over us except for Caesar. They had no clue that this cross work right here would be God's final staple in reconciling both heaven and earth unto himself. Had they known that that blood was going to atone for the sin of the world and God was going to show Paul a mystery, how all people, all men could be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth, they would have never crucified him. They would have done everything in their power to keep him off that cross. But God's wisdom, God's hidden wisdom, gave unto Paul a mystery. How that Christ didn't just die for covenant of Israel, but how he died and shed his blood for a people who were not a people, who were alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and had no hope, and they were without God in the world. That blood reached you and I. That blood atoned for our sins. Amen. 
Amen. Without a covenant. That mystery right there, without a covenant. There's your mystery. These people don't have a covenant. They had no promise from God. They had no inheritance. And God chose Paul that by that blood and by that cross and by that resurrection, all that believe on him are justified from all things which the law of Moses could not do. And now we have an inheritance. And it's not the earth. It's the heavens. That's a beautiful thing, is it not? Look over in 2 Corinthians with me. Keep your mind on faith. Not your beliefs. So what I, can, what I can tell you about beliefs, folks, when I first come to this, my beliefs, I got offended by some stuff. I, got, I heard a man one day as I was driving say, you can't be saved by John 3, 16. And I, uh, 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 I about wrecked. I mean, I was swapping lanes. I was like, what did he just say? But the more I learned, the more I learned that my gospel is not John 3, 16. John 3, 16, Jesus Christ was given to Israel that all who would believe on that name would not perish but have everlasting life. Israel would come into covenant with God. They'd have their sins remitted and, and, and then later on forgiven. And then they would take that gospel, the kingdom, out to the world. But Israel never made it. Israel failed. So therefore salvation has gone to the Gentiles. Paul shows you that in Romans chapter 11. And Paul says his gospel. How did Christ die for our sins? according to the scriptures, was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That had not been preached that way until Paul got it. Right? All men can be saved. A ransom for all. Amen? What did Jesus say over there about the blood of the New Testament? It shed for many. Paul showed how it was a ransom for all. He gave Paul a new revelation here concerning this thing. Back over to 2 Corinthians in chapter 5. Keep your mind on faith. Chapter 5, look at verse 7. For we walk by faith, not by what? Who required a sign in the Bible? The Jews. What was the Greek seeking after? Wisdom. Wisdom from the Jew who required a sign. What are you not doing? Not seeking either one of them. He done told me don't let my faith rest in the wisdom of man. And I don't need a sign to say Jesus is real. I don't need a sign to say, whoo, look at the power of God. I know the power of God because I've got 66 books. And he said to study to show thyself approved unto God. I've got a book that tells me that when that which is perfect is come, that which is in part shall be done away. Well, that's why the sign gifts went away. We have the full canon of Scripture. We don't need a sign from God. I've got God's Word. I've got the mind of Christ right here in this book. You know what it requires? Get off your lazy hump and study it. Sorry about that. This is called Facebook. Put your face in this book. <laughs> Amen? That's what it's there for, my friend. You need to get in this book. You need to talk this thing. You need to read this thing. You need to study this thing. Talk to yourself. Let your wife know you're retarded. She knows already you're crazy. <laughs> you ain't fooling her. Go ahead and read the Bible, man. When he talks about walking by faith and not by sight, he's not talking about some willy-nilly attempt to tempt God because I'm so walking, not by sight. He's not saying, go out and do something stupid. I got you covered. Yeah. Well, I'm walking. When he says you're walking by faith, you're walking according to the Word of God. The faith, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We walk by faith what God has said. If you want to hear God speak to you, read His book. If you want to hear Him out loud, read out loud. That's why I do it. Amen? That's how I walk. I walk according to what I know. What are you doing for what you know? That's what you're going to be judged for when you get in the judgment seat of Christ. What did you do with what you learned? Amen? Amen. And we know that we're walking by faith because we've never seen Christ. I'm not looking for something in the clouds to show up and say, He's real. Man, I've told you that story. I've seen people do that. I had a guy to tell me at work one day. He said, I was riding home. And he said, all of a sudden, I looked up in the clouds and I saw praying hands. Well, I told you, man, my wife sat out in a lawn chair in the summertime, and she said, look at that one. That looks like a doll. Yeah, now look at it. it. We sat there, and we... Ow. Now, did I tell you all how simple we are, right? 
Pray for us. Pray for us. I'm telling you, we're, we're not that bad off. It's just, it's enter, entertaining for us, okay? To sit and look at the shapes in the cloud. I don't look at them as being a sign from God. They dissipate in just a little bit. It'll look like something else. Well, that's, come on, man, right? We don't need a sign from God. We don't need somebody to get healed over here with Willie laying hands on them so that we can believe that God is real. We don't need somebody to go over here and perform a miracle and, and say, uh, well, now you believe? No, I, I believe because the Word of God. I believe because He's given me the book. And I've read the book. I believe the book. And if somebody don't believe the book, then that's on you. I believe the book. Amen? Amen? Go back and look at uh, 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians, when you get there, I'm going to show you a little bit of where your beliefs can be problematic. Faith is what you need. And faith comes how? And how? All right. So it's not about getting Dr. Spock's information. Okay. It's not about going and sitting down in the pastor's office and say, what do you believe about this? I've had those guys reach back behind them and get a book off of the shelf. It's not the Bible. It's what somebody taught on marriage or taught on this or finances, whatever. And they said, have you ever read so-and-so? Nope. Well, I wonder what the Bible says about it, man. Yeah. Well, he does a really good job with it. No, man. He said, don't let your faith rest in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. The power of God is the Word of God. If the power of God can step out on nothing and speak all things into existence, I can trust it with my eternal soul. Amen? Here we go, Jake. Hope, hope he's laughing. All right? Look here in chapter 1. Look at verse 10. Here's what men's belief will do. Now I beseech you, brethren... By the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, and there be no divisions among you. Man's beliefs will create denominations. You know what denominations mean? To name, to nominate. That's what it means. So, hey, we believe you got to be baptized in fresh water. Well, we believe you got to be baptized in running water. Well, we believe you can do it in a pool. Well, we believe you got to be dunked three times. Yeah. Well, we just believe we'll hold you down there for three minutes. <laughs> Divisions. Yeah. So when you don't line up with my beliefs, what we do, we break off and we go start us a denomination. Yeah. Now we call that over there the church of the ignorant brethren. Yeah. And we keep on doing the ignorant things that we do out of our beliefs. Yeah. But when you come to faith, the faith that was given unto Paul... You're not creating divisions. You're coming into unity of the faith. Because you realize in the book of Ephesians in chapter 4, 4 and 5, that there's only one faith. Amen. And it's not the faith to go out and build an ark. It's not the faith to, to take a bullock or a goat and put him up on a flaming altar to offer him up for your sins. It's not the faith that you can go out here and pick up serpents, thank God. <laughs> That you can go out here and heal the sick and cleanse the leper and raise the dead. That's not the faith. The faith is the faith of Christ that Paul delivered unto us. How that Christ did everything, left us nothing to do except believe and trust Him. Amen. That's the faith of God. That's the faith of Christ. Amen? People can't handle that. You know why? Because I can't find my name in that book anywhere. What do I do? You did all you could do, man. You're a low-down, rotten scoundrel, and Jesus Christ went and forgave you sins. That's what you did. Well, I'm better now, not according to the flesh, you ain't. Right? The only good thing in you, if you have anything good in you, is Jesus Christ if He is in you. Right? That's the goodness, is Jesus Christ. See, He's going to always get the credit around here. And I don't care if, them, if it gets down to just me and my wife. Man, we have a good time at home talking about this book. I'll be honest with y'all. If it gets down to just me and her, we're going to give Jesus credit. You know how much we're going to give you? None. You know what we're going to tell you? You need Jesus. You need his righteousness. You need to be justified unto eternal life. I'm going to do that to the day I go by the cloud or to the day I go by the cloud. Amen. Well, I don't like it. Well, I'm sorry. You can go find your little preacherette sucking on a cigarette and singing your serenette. Driving a Corvette. Amen. <laughs> Go over to Philippians. 
No divisions in the body. That's against, that's contrary to what Christ. Christ said, Paul, tell them no divisions in this body. This body is not supposed to be divided up. It's not supposed to be divided up. Baptists, Jehovah's Witnesses, Methodists, and Lutheran. It, it, that's, that's man. That's man's beliefs. That's not God's doing. That's not the faith. Look at Philippians, if you will. Philippians in chapter 1 when you get there. Look at verse 27. Keep your mind on faith. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that you stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of what? The gospel. How in the world could you stand and strive in one spirit and one faith of the gospel if you don't know the gospel? I heard a man preach for 30 minutes yesterday morning, Matthew 28, putting his congregation as he said, the Lord demanded you, demanded me that we go all nations. And then he stopped and caught himself saying all nations. He goes, now what I really believe that means is we go out to our jobs and out on our daily lives and out to school. That Bible, that's adding a bunch to it, isn't it? Yeah. He said, go teach all nations that which I've taught you. Well, you would have to go teach them to go to those that sit in Moses' seat, right? Yeah. Jesus taught them that. Jesus taught them to obey the law, did he not? That's what you would be teaching. That would be contrary to what he gave Paul. He gave Paul the dispensation of the grace of God, where a man is justified by the grace of God, by the power of God, and by the faith of Christ, and without the deeds of the law. You can't go teach the body of Christ what Jesus taught in his earthly ministry. Paul said, we henceforth know Christ that way no more. Amen. Amen. What is that faith, Donnie? It's the faith of Christ. It is the revelation of mystery which was kept secret since the world began. The new friends that we made, they, they said that we're, we're going to go sit down to our Baptist pastor and that, that, you know we kind of explain this stuff to him. We're trying to make a decision. And they, she said, there are any verses that you might use? I said, yeah. I always use Romans 16 and 25 against Acts 3, 18 and 21. Paul said the preaching of his gospel and Jesus Christ according to Revelation of Mystery, which had been kept secret since the world began. Peter said in 3, 18, 21, that which was spoken by the mouth of whole, all the holy prophets since the world began. I said, if he says those two things are the same, you take off running like Bruce Jenner before he started wearing high heels. <laughs> you get away. Because that man does not know his Bible. He don't know the mystery and he don't know the grace of God. And he don't know Paul's his apostle. And right, honestly, he's not qualified to be teaching you the Bible. Y'all with me? That's rude. That's mean. Pray for me continually. Right? Go back to Ephesians. Keep the word faith in your mind. Maybe about 10 more minutes and we're going to shut her down here. All right. Look at verse 4. Chapter 4, verse 4. There is one body. See that? There's not two. There's not multiple tribes in this body. There's not Jew and Gentile in this body as far as their identity in Christ. That was their identity before they got into Christ. In Christ, it's all one body. We've all been made one to drink into one spirit. Amen. Amen. And one spirit. Yeah. Even as you're called in one hope of your calling. One Lord. Yeah. One what? Faith. What is that faith, Paul? It's the doctrine, the body of doctrine that Christ gave Paul in the revelation of the mystery. How all men can be saved and come to the knowledge of truth without the prophetic vehicle of Israel. Israel is blinded in part to the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. We didn't get salvation because of Isaiah 60 because of their rise. We got salvation because of their fall. To wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses. Amen. And has committed unto us the ministry of reconciliation. 
How did he made him to be sin for us that we might be made the righteous of God in him? You, you're learning something right there. You're learning what this faith is. This faith has nothing to do with you and your flesh. Amen. What this faith has to do with is Jesus Christ. He gets all preeminence. He gets all glory. He gets all praise. He gets all honor. He gets everything. Yes, he does. Amen. Yes. And that just tickles my soul. All right. Look over in Ephesians 4.10. He that ascended is the same also that ascended. Up far above all heavens that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Now I'm going to deal with that verse just for a little bit because I feel like that gets, that gets misconstrued a lot. These are the gifts that he gave unto men. At that time he gave them apostles and prophets and he gave some evangelists and some pastors and teachers to get this word that Paul had out. Well, here's the purpose. Look down in, in verse 12. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Now watch. Till we all come into unity of the... Faith. Does it say come into unity of faith? No. Of the faith. No. Right? You see the the there on the front of that? This faith that Paul's received from Christ. Yeah. So there were apostles and prophets given unto men to help administer this message. The Spirit of God given it to them. He gave it to Paul. Paul would preach it. They would hear it. The Spirit would verify in them that Paul had the revelation. And it was the Spirit of God working in them. Right. Galatians 2 will tell you that. When they saw that the power of God was now on Paul, right? They agreed. They would go back to Jerusalem and Paul would go to the heathen, right? Till we all come into the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God into a what? Perfect man. All right. Unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Now verse 14 is crucial. That we henceforth be no more children. Tossed to and fro and cared about whatever went to doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Now I'll just say this. If that congregation yesterday, when I watched that man preach, had have known what the revelation of mystery was, that man would have been preaching to an empty room. Yep. They'd have got up and walked out. That's right. They'd have realized that was not the body of Christ. They'd have realized that was the nation Israel. Yep. Right? They would have left him standing there. Yep. All right. Then he might have went home and studied to show himself approved so he could get his money back. Yeah. Empty handed if you ain't got people there, right? Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians thirteen and five. Second Corinthians thirteen. Verse five. Examine yourselves. Whether you be in the faith, see that? Mm -hmm. Not in faith, that you're in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know you not your own selves. Know that Jesus Christ is in you except you be reprobate. How would you examine yourself? According to the word of God given unto Paul, the doctrine given unto him. Go back and look at 2 Timothy with me. And we're not far from closing, I promise. 2 Timothy. Look at chapter 3. Second Timothy chapter 3. Look at verse 15. <clears throat> and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. See that? He's not telling Timothy, this is how you're going to get saved, soul salvation, Timothy. He's handing the ministry off to Timothy. What's it going to save him from? Go back and look. Look at verse 13. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou have learned, and hast been assured of knowing whom thou have learned them. Where did he learn them from? Paul. And what did Paul tell Timothy that those scriptures would do and understand? It will save you from deceiving men. It will save you from evil seducers. Not a soul salvation. It will save you from that jargon. Go back. Let me show you this. Look at verse 5 of the same chapter. 
They have a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. You're going to turn away from them because you know the truth. They can't get you, Timothy, if you'll stick with what I'm giving you. All right, now look down at verse 7. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. That's not you, Timothy. You know the scripture. They're going to make you wise unto salvation from all that stuff. Watch the next verse. Now as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so did these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds. Well, we ain't heard that. No. Reprobate concerning the faith. You think somebody with a corrupt mind is sitting down here on a bar stool drinking liquor getting ready to fall off. No. Corrupt minds holding Bibles that aren't the King James Bible and telling you that you're Israel, you're a sheep, and Jesus is your shepherd, and you need to go out here and eat some sheep food. Paul's saying, Timothy, that'll keep you from that if you'll learn what I told you. Remember what I told you. You'll know you're part of this spiritual body that's going to inherit the heavens. That Jesus Christ went to a cross, paid for all your sin, was buried with your sin, raised without your sin, and went back to heaven to justify you freely if you'll believe that. Amen. 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 That'll save you. When a man's not preaching that gospel, you know what you need to do? I, I would tell you it's been fun, but it hadn't. I won't be back. I won't be back. I won't come back for the sake of checking the box. I went to church today. Right? Hey, man, there's better things to do. If, you, if a man's not going to teach you this Bible right in the valley, you're better off fishing. You might on a fishing boat. At least praise the Lord when you catch one. Right? Look over here at 2 Timothy 3. I was there, wasn't I? Yeah. Look at 16. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. See that? If that Word of God, if you are too proud to sit and say, I got that wrong, they're out there. Hey, I had an error right there. I'm sorry, folks. I, I, I didn't see that that way back when. I, I, I've got new light. I, I, if a man can't do that, then he's just boastful, proud, and high-minded. Yes. Yep. You know what he's telling you? I've always known it all. Yep. Yep. My foot, my back leg. Yep. You need help. Yep. Let that word do it. All right? Go back and look at um, Galatians 2. And that's where we're going to finish off. Galatians 2. I have more, but I know we gotta we gotta part and get home and do what we gotta do today. Galatians in chapter 2. What about this faith, Paul? Let's look at it. Verse 20. Paul says, I am crucified with Christ. 2 and 20. I'm crucified with him. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live how? By the, By the faith of whom? The Son of, the Son of God who loved me, and he gave himself for me. Now look at 21. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Amen? So the Apostle Paul just laid that faith right out on top of him. It's the faith of Christ, right? It's all that Christ did that we could not do for ourselves. It was all that he did to atone for our sins, to take care of the root problem, which is sin, and that when we trust him and believe that gospel, we'll justify it unto eternal life. When he justifies us unto eternal life, he declares us righteous. Righteous. You can't be righteous without him imputing his righteousness to you. Isn't that a beautiful trade-off? Yes. God Almighty put his sin, charged him, imputed him with your sins. God Almighty charges you with his righteousness. Amen. That's the faith. Yes. That's the faith. Amen. How many know that? Yes. Very few. Yeah, very few. Well, run around here, get on your knees and pray that God will do a little something for you. Uh, look, what I would do this morning, I'd walk this aisle and I'd get down here and I'd lay all my sins on this altar down here. How does that work? Somebody help me out this morning. How would you lay your sins on an altar where there's no altar? God's not acknowledging sacrifices from your flesh. God Almighty put Jesus Christ on the altar, 
right there and poured his wrath up on him, shed his blood, buried him with your sin, raised him without your sin until justification of life. And that just hair lips the devil, man. He can't stand it. And every preacher that hears it, all he shakes all over. You got to be willing to turn from your sin. If you could turn from your sin, Jesus Christ died in vain. Amen. What sinner can turn from his sin? And how much sin does he have to turn from? All of them. <laughs> Good luck, brother. Good luck, pal. I tell you what, you go your way, your belief. I'm going to go with the faith. Amen. You see how your belief can be problematic? Huh? Well, we believe something. Oh, yeah. But are you in the faith? Examine yourselves if you be in the faith or not. There's a true way to know if you're in the faith or not. If you've given all the credit to Jesus Christ, you believe what God testified about his son. If you don't, you better search your soul. You better search that thing. Y'all been running around for years trying to get somebody to forgive you. You need justification. Unto life. His life eternal. All right, let us pray. Father, we're so grateful for this day, for your word. So grateful for the King James Bible. So grateful for everyone that come out here this morning. We pray for all the mothers today, Lord, that they'd have a wonderful day. And for those who no longer have their mothers, Lord, we pray for that soul. And God, we just pray for each one here. We pray for be one has never heard the gospel. How that Jesus Christ took care of everything on the cross for their sin. That is done. What he wants is them to put their faith in that and receive his justification, the free gift of justification unto eternal life. We give you all the praise, honor, and glory for that. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone did say, Amen. Amen.